Welcome back, everyone, to Nanalaze at Dawn. Our main your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, and we have one more match today, one more replay, requested by FSC between them and Darkest High on Adansonia. So let's get to it! FFC going for Ampot Factory, as is Darkest High. So, pretty common there, though. FFC is starting out with archers, while Darkest High is starting out with a bunch of ducks. I agree with FFC. Archers pretty much beat ducks, usually. Though, that's a lot of ducks from Darkest Eye. Darkest Eye going for an extremely aggressive opening. Whereas FFC, they're going straight for workers immediately afterwards. They're just using the archers as a defense for the workers to expand. So, I mean, it's a common setup where you have one player going more aggressive, one player going more economical. And I, like, kind of agree with FFC. This is a larger map. It's usually a good idea to go economical on this map. And especially to the extent they are going economical versus their opponent's aggression. Yeah, I think FFC's got the right idea. So at the same time, Darkest Tide's gonna have a much easier time splitting up and hitting basically every part of the map and double checking where FFC is gonna be and keeping tabs on that. It's just that it's gonna be kinda hard with the archer getting in the way and killing all the ducks before any real damage is dealt to the archer. Bearing around the archer can just go in the water and heal up, as can all Amphibot units, mind you. But there's a lot of water to heal up in, so it could do that now if it so chose. But the important thing is that as long as the scouting is not done on FSC's base, or that ducks don't manage to get in behind before any workers do, it's fine. And that's exactly what FFC is doing. They're setting up their archer to block any ducks from getting to the northeast, because this little plateau over to the side, that is a very common place to stick, stick some kind of offensive raider force just to stop any works from coming in. FFC knows it. FFC is dealing with it. So I like FFC's approach here. And again, water for healing. But yeah, now, oh, oh, that duck. Oh, that sad duck being forced up the ramp. That was a bad space to be. I mean, yeah, archers push. That is their key thing. But on flat ground, it's not as big of a deal. We saw before the duck was able to get a shot off. In that case, no. No, there was, there was a nice little surface to run it up before it got killed. So that was a sad duck. And then a dead duck. But now it's a damp duck, so you can't really eat it. I guess you could cook it and it would it would evaporate some of the water. I don't know. Damp duck meat sounds really gross. At any rate, Darkest Eye is still trying to come in with a little bit of harassment coming with the ducks, but again, I mean, FFC just defended well enough. Again, that was the thing. They needed to defend this northeast section. They defended the northeast section. They're good. Everything else is something that can be pretty easily gone to, but the northeast, if something is there, it's really difficult unless you're playing as jump bots to get a unit, or maybe spiders. Yeah, jump or spider are the only factors that can get from one side to the other without having to go through the entire section below. But Amphbots have to go through this lower section. So because of that, if your opponent has already set up some units over in the northeast or the southwest in the case of Darkest Eye, then you can't easily actually deal with that. You're con you have to go around. I mean, Amphbots do have the option of going around the back, but still, they have to go around. So your opponent can still set up and to some extent actually get a little bit cozy in there before you're able to dislodge them and take the expansion for yourself. And, like I said, this is why Darkest Eye wasn't allowed to get in there, why FSC stopped them. And so in general, when you're playing this map, make sure your opponent does not get to the northeast or southwest. Doesn't get to this little plateau island. Oh. Oh, nice. Clever. Darkest Eye setting up a bunch of wind gener or tidal generators, rather, on the far border of the map, where their opponent's not likely to look. Like, this is the corner of the map. This is the edge as far as you can go off the map. So that's really smart of them. Now, get rid of that risk, really, when it comes to their power infrastructure. And they can't use it for overdrive very easily. I mean, they, I think, can build a pylon. Yeah, they can build a pylon on the water. So they could turn that into a pylon, like, around here, that allows them to connect to the rest of their grid. But that's a really clever thing to do. FFC, on the other hand, having a bit of a hard time with power, actually. Not really going for too much. Getting a few solar plants here and there, but not focusing too much on getting a massive power infrastructure. And as a result, starting to fall a bit behind. Having, actually, east all issues, all things considered. Which is going to be a problem. They're pretty close to excessing. They don't have a caretaker in their main base, and they don't have anything they're really spending money on, except for more metal extractors. So, excess is inevitable. Thankfully for them, it's not reclaim, so it's not like they're losing anything permanently. But it's still a bit of a problem, and they don't have any real apparent solution for it. Other than building more 
metal extractors, which means, of course, that they're going to be getting more metal. And I guess building more... Building more solar collectors. That's good, but the problem, of course, is their factory does not have any caretakers on it. Darkest Time, on the other hand, same thing, same problem. And they could get a couple conches there as well, but that's the thing. We aren't seeing any conches either. I say caretakers... I broadly mean that we aren't seeing anything that's actually dealing with this with this metal glut. Caretakers, conches, commander, whatever. Whatever can be done to actually spend that money is still spending the money, but it's not being done right now. Darkest on the other hand, they are quite a bit behind in terms of metal. They haven't expanded that way as much, but they are getting their power infrastructure pretty strongly built up. So, at the very least, there is that. The other problem, though, Darkest High, I think they're focusing far more on production of... Okay, what's their unit production right? No, no priority. Double checking the priorities in both cases, because oftentimes players will set their factory to low priority so that they're prioritizing the unit, the construction of of economy, and it looks like no. Or the commander on high priority, but again, no, that's doesn't seem to be happening. Nope, it's just Darkest Tide simply doesn't have as much metal, and they're trying to spend on a lot of different projects across the map. So that does limit things. Nice little harassment, though. The duck was her, was just going around the side. Darkest Eye trying to find out if FC had built a bunch of metal, or a bunch of wind generators along the north side of the map before going into harass. And I don't think FC was aware of that at all, actually. No, there's no way they could have been. They had no, they had no radar over there. Or the units that were in the water. So no, FC probably has no idea that all these wind generators are being constructed. And probably what will happen is they get into Darkest Eye's base and wonder, where the heck is that energy coming from? I broke their energy! But I don't know. I mean, that's of course assuming that there's a pylon or something to connect the grids. And there's no reason necessarily to believe there will be, and there's no reason for FFC to actually go to the south side of the map and just take out all these wind generators. I mean, Darkest High thought of it, which was a good thing to think of. I like it. It's really clever. And FFC at this point, not really worried about it, but again, they've got plenty of metal. They've got enough energy. The main advantage of Darkest High is going to ultimately be using that for extra overdrive. Because this is cheap and very efficient power. As long as they can turn that into some kind of additional overdrive, they pop it into their main base, connect it to their grids. Pop it possibly in both, actually. Like, if you set up in both, yeah, you could, you could pretty easily set up a pylon over here, and then a pylon over here. Both bases of energy grids, that's a bunch of extra overdrive. That's nice. That's a good way of setting it up. Although I am a bit worried for Darkest Tide that they are actually building too much in power and not enough in units. And that it's going to really bite them. Because, again, FFC is expanding a lot faster. And one thing that I've noticed when it comes to higher-level players is they tend not to build much more power than they need. Which is pretty sensible, because if you're spending money on power infrastructure, you're not spending money on units. Which means you're not spending money on stuff that can actually be used to break your opponent's stuff. Or you're not spending money on units that can be used to defend your own expansion attempts. Which means you can't really easily get around the map and take things out. Which is a bit of a problem, because if you can't do that, then you can't get the money to actually win the game. FFC is also switched off to air. We'll be getting an owl fairly soon, and that will allow them to spot this sneaky bit of wind generator line. And again, that hasn't been used at this point for any overdrive. There's a lot of power here, too. Like, there's a lot of power here. 39 energy being being generated from this alone. And granted, that is taking some of the load off the solar collectors. That allows them to overdrive a bit more, just by the fact that the energy isn't being used for construction. It's just free, so it can be used for overdrive. But, man, if that was connected to the grid, that'd be even better. But also, if that was stuff that actually was going to be able to help in a fight, that might be better still, because at this point, Darkest High, their energy, they're not going to have to worry about Reclaim. They can go grab Reclaim whenever they like, but all they have right now is Ducks. Compared to an Air Force on top of a bunch of Scallops and Boys, and the fact that FSC has expanded more on their side of the map, Darkest High isn't too far behind in terms of energy, but they are kind of far behind in terms of army value. Mostly making up for it by their commander being upgraded quite a bit. A couple rocket launchers, extra range, extra speed. Not a bad mix. FFC's commander, just lightning rifle for safety. But yeah, that's the thing. This this army here, it's, I'm not sure how well it's going to manage to work out here. Oh, did those ducks... Oh, I didn't quite get lucky. Thought maybe the duck missiles managed to hit the force, but no, they're not going to hit that army at range. Instead, we get grizzlies. Hmm. You know, I'd like to see, I'd like to see Darkest Tide try to throw in some, like, 
lobsters or something, but I don't think that we're going to see that. It just occurred to me, because we saw lobsters in one of the tournament matches, and they didn't manage to do anything, but Darkest Tie was focused already on sneaking around in the back. And I can see, like, lobster gin combination in this map would work really well, because they can sneak around in the water on the side of the map, and then pop into the backside. No one really tries to defend there. I mean, okay, right now it's a bad idea, because FFC would spot it in advance, but still. That's something, generally, that's not gone for. That might actually be quite effective. That'd be really cool if it worked, too. Also, these ducks are not going to deal enough damage. I not I like the idea in theory, but no, that's not strong enough. But anyway, yeah, the way the dark, Darkest Eye was trying to just sneak around the map, it would work. And actually, that's exactly what FFC is doing. So, okay, so we are going to see exactly that. Just Jin, though, not, not Jin Lobster. I mean, it doesn't really have to. This map, the way it's built up, because there's this little inlet, it's possible for Amphibians to just get in from behind. But I'd like to see the lobster gin combo actually work. I think it's doable. Ravage, no. Ravage, the hills are too high. Or the cliffs are too high. But add in Zonia, now it's totally doable. And that'd be so cool. But no. Yeah. Actually, kind of surprising. Yeah, point, people pointing out that this is interesting. That this is it seems like a stomp because Darkest Tie has much has a smaller army or something, but I don't know. I mean, it's, it seems even, what are the army values right now? I've got a bit of a dry period. Oh, sh yeah, okay, FFC's way ahead for army value. Other value? Darkest Eye is slightly ahead for commander, but the commander isn't going to be able to do much if it dies. Yeah, Darkest Eye is in one of those positions where they can't easily win but they also aren't going to be easily brought down and made to lose. Kind of a turtley position, but at the same time, Darkest Eye is also not really focusing on building up anything... Oh, never mind, there's their focus, getting a crow! Getting a crow alongside some grizzlies. This map is really good for crows. I guess it's not surprising, it's kind of a larger map with defensible choke points that if your opponents are going for Amphib as you are, then it's fairly easy to set that up, but at the same time... Really? This is the second crow. Like, we saw a crow in tournament match on this map. And that's an expensive unit. Granted, there's a lot of money to be had. This, the other reason why it works is a lot of metal on this map, so that's fair. But still, that's a really risky strategy, because at this point, the Darkest High is super open. FFC could just march into their base right now. And they'd take a lot of losses, and Darkest High's commander would be the main problem there. But FFC might still be able to deal enough damage to cause a crippling blow. Maybe not kill him immediately. But still, Crow's done. Another Crow is on the way. Because, I mean, it only takes a few minutes, which is a lot still. Like, that's a super heavy-duty unit. But, hey, now the Crow's up. They can start ripping things apart. And at the same time, there aren't really a lot of Aryans to deal with. Like, just a couple Phoenixes, no Ravens. Ravens would be a great choice, but nope. And in terms of anti-air, there's Vandals. Another good call, but again, not much. Is that Jin just being used for scouting? Not really, no. Oh, I see. It's trying to set up the teleport beacon, but it can't because... Oh, it can. Never mind. It's good. That's to say it can't because it can't go up the hill, but no, it can because the teleport beacon was already set up in advance in order to get the units that are just constructed. Ooh, I love it. Yeah, this is nice. Yeah, set the units into the water. And really, Darkest has none the, none the wiser. Though they do have this crow, and I'm... Actually, not sure how this is going to work out, because the crow should be able to get around the back. Looks like it is, in fact, going for the main base. Oops. It is, in fact, going for the main base, and it should spot the gin lamp. Like, if it gets in here and spots the lamp, then it's kind of clear, oh, hey, something's up. Especially as they are losing wind generators, or tidal generators, rather. It's probably going to be cl clear that something's going on. And there is, in fact, a lobster as well. So we are seeing a slightly refined version of the strategy we saw before, but the crow coming in and putting a stop to that before it really gets off the ground. And yes, that lobster should be able to get the lamp uh, gin off the ground, but it may not even matter. The lamp is still alive, mind you. Hasn't taken a lot of damage, but at this point, one of the factors is down. Most of the characters are down. The crow forced to retreat somewhat, but still, it can just get away from this entire army. Possibly take out this expansion as well. Took out a bunch of metal extractors and got rid of the main factory, the amphib factory that was causing the problems. Granted, I think the lamp might be able to teleport air units. And if it can, that'd be kind of funny, actually. Just teleport a phoenix right into the back lines. That would be amazing. Oh, can you do that? 
please do that. Oh, that, oh no. They're not even trying. I mean, can you imagine there's not... Okay, there is a chainsaw there. Never mind. That's... It would look cool, but it wouldn't actually accomplish much. Never mind. Really, the thing to teleport in would be grizzlies. But they're already in the front line, so I don't see that happening anytime soon. Of course, the problem here is that there isn't a lot of skirmisher forces to actually deal with the grizzlies. There's a couple of boys and the commander, but that's about it. Although the commander's got grizzly health. Actually, more health than a grizzly. Sheesh. Still, though, the crow, unable to really do much, should be able to harass this expansion over here. But otherwise, it hasn't really managed to accomplish a whole lot. Oh, is that teleporting some of the shields back here? No, no, it's not. Yeah, so okay, so the crow is still managing to deal some damage, get rid of a few things. Might get damaged in the process by this pylon pretty heavily, in fact. But hey, there's another D-gun drop. There's the bombs! Should get rid of both of these factories, or possibly all three? No, just the first two. The amphib factory is still up. The amphib factory, in fact, will be the thing killing it. Even though the crow does, in its dying breath, destroy the amphib factory. It's not enough. Regardless, the fact is the lamp has been spotted. Or at least the idea that there's a teleporter has been spotted. I don't think Darkest Eye knows where it is, but they know that it is. And that's still important. Of course, the question is, how is that going to actually work out? Because, I mean, the units are still here. The idea, of course, being that a lobster will be knocking this gin over or knocking the scallops over, getting them on the high ground. But of course, that strategy did get slowed down quite a bit thanks to the crow. That bought Darkest Eye loads of time, but what they've done with it is questionable. They've built up some archers, some anglers, a few grizzlies, and are abandoning the front lines. Okay, this is risky as hell. If FSC gets convinced to pull back, it'll work, but I, I don't... Does FFC... Yeah, FFC knows this is happening. I don't know what, what's going on. Like, FFC has full radar coverage. So, they know that Darkest Eye is doing this. They know the front lines are totally open right now. And the back lines, too, as the, as the ah, scallops just managed to get in, tear apart all the defenses from behind. Nothing is here to stop them. A few lotuses aren't able to do the job. Thanks to some really smart lobster play there. And that should be game, as FFC manages to make that, that strategy I wanted to see work, work. Took a little bit longer than I'm sure they wanted it to because of that crow. And that has given Darkest Eye a possible opportunity to come in around the sides and maybe take out some of FFC's forces. But at this point, FFC, they've got so much money to work with. They have the entire center reclaim. They have... Well, actually, no, the entire base reclaim. Not even center reclaim. Just their base's reclaim on top of the crow. I mean, they're mostly accessing it, but still. they. The important thing is they've been able to get that attack working. They've been able to get rid of Darkest Eye's base. If they can stop this attack coming in from Darkest Eye, they'll be fine. And that was... That gun was building the crow, by the way. That was the follow-up crow under construction. That's not happening. So there's no second crow. Darkest High just has this force here. And their front line is starting to get attacked. So, really... FFC just needs to push. Tank factor being built up, though, by Darkest High to try to make up for everything that just got damaged. Not a bad idea. Though, unfortunately, they have to rebuild all the caretakers as well. But they have enough conscious. It's not a big deal. They could just push with the conscious and... That's still, 30 build, that's still 40 build power in total between the conscious and the factory. So rebuilding shouldn't be a problem, but the question is, how much damage can Darkest Tide do while FFC is trying to just push in and take out all Darkest Tide's front lines? Because FFC is clearly not threatened. They're not pulling back. I think they figure, and I agree, that they can deal with this force. Especially as Darkest Tide is not actually building anything in the tank factory. I mean, if Darkest Tide loses this army... They're done. This is their only real hope, is to have this army here, get rid of everything that's been built up by FFC, convince them to go into the back lines, and that's assuming that FFC just doesn't even worry about it because they have all the scalpels inside of Darkest High's main base. Like, Lobster Jin did its job. This is the scary thing Amphib can do, especially on a map where it actually has water all around, so it's easier to hide it. But yeah, that's... That looks like Darkest is probably going to be a game. I don't... I don't necessarily call it a stomp. That crow attack early on was still effective, but I do I do think that using the crows as much as they were was the mistake. I said that when it happened, I do think the one crow did a good job, got value. The second crow I don't agree with. I think at that point they should have been switched over to Revenants or Harpies. Something a bit lighter weight, something a bit better able to deal with an army. Or just switch off air entirely. Just go get another ground factory. And use that to build stuff. 
because as it was, like, the Grizzlies, okay, that's nice, but it's not going to be necessarily enough on its own. And the not sure what really would have been built off the gunship plant because there was all the Vandals in the way. I can kind of see the reason not to go for anything but Crow, because the Vandals would have stopped it. You got 38 Vandals, 27, oh, nice, 27, 36 burst damage. So yeah, they would have taken out anything. And Vandals hit pretty quickly, so that's not saying nothing. So at this point, really, Darkest Tide, I'm not sure what they could have built up after that, but, or at that point, rather, at this point, they're kind of hooped. I don't really know what they can do. They're trying their best, building up the can, and they're not too far behind in terms of metal. But, again, they have their opponents able to deploy units right in the back of their base. And they have no way of stopping it right now. They have no Amphifactory or whatever. They have nothing to actually hit this underwater stuff. The commander's about to go down. Or at least he's about to get completely stunned out by a bunch of gnats. And nothing can really stop that. So the commander, which is a pretty large chunk of their investment, has gone down along with a couple of grizzlies. I think if once that commander goes down, that's going to be it. I think Darkest Tide doesn't really have anything else up their sleeve. They have some minotaurs and ogres being built up in their main base, but that's not much. Not compared to the sheer weight of the grizzlies being used, and that's after they pull back. Yeah, with all the grizzlies and boys, there's not much left. It's just going to be a matter of what they can do for stalling. That's it. What can you do to stall? Hmm. Well. Wait, is... What? Oh, yeah. That's... People talking in chat about how what they could have done with the lamp or use it in the mid. It's like, no, that worked fine. Getting rid of the factories wasn't a bad idea. Actually, getting rid of the factories did buy some time. The problem was that the lamp wasn't hit afterwards. If the lamp had been hit, then Darkest High would have been fine. Because at that point, the lobster wasn't in the in the sea b behind the base. But it's too late now. It's just that when the crow came in, if the crow had focused on the lamp and gotten rid of it along with the factory and not really worried about anything else, it would have been fine. Because they got rid of the factory, they got rid of the characters, they slowed down FFC by a couple minutes. That would have been enough time for Darkest High to get rid of this lamp, get rid of a bunch of the forces coming in, and then pivot over to the front line, get rid of the armies, when there was nothing really to rebuild them. So this case actually was a case where destroying the factory wasn't a bad idea. It's just there wasn't the follow-up for it, in terms of getting rid of the units and completely securing the center of the map, that it would allow Darkest Tide to push forward. Especially with either additional crows, or with additional lighter weight units. Something else. Maybe get the tank factory early on and use that to build up emissaries or something. But, no, that's not happening now. Now is just the desperate attempt to get rid of the Grizzlies using Ogres, which I call desperate for a reason. Because I don't have much confidence that this is going to work, especially not with all the boys coming in here to deal with everything else. I'm sure the Minotaurs are going to take a while to go down, especially with the Caretakers just doing all their work. But the problem now is, of course, the Caretakers aren't helping the factory, which means that it's building much slower than it would otherwise be. And yeah, it, it really is coming down to this Minotaur, which is still taking too much damage. So that's... That's going to be it. Darkest Tide, valiant effort, but FFC being super clever with the strategy with the Jin. And ultimately, while Darkest Tide did manage to do some damage to the Crow, it didn't do enough, especially not in getting rid of the really key thing being the Lamp. And I think part of that is that people don't use Jin very often. So that's the thing. It's... Oh. Lamp can be placed literally anywhere from literally anywhere? Really? I thought the lamp had to be placed where the djinn was at any point in space. Well, if that's the case, then never mind. The lamp being would have meant nothing. My bad. I mean, it was still still bought some time. But, yeah, if the lamp can just be placed arbitrarily on the map, then no. I thought the lamp had to be placed where the djinn was, and then the djinn had to walk to where they would end up teleporting to. thought that was the idea. But anyway, yeah, that's going to be it. So, there's Darker Tide throwing the towel, as we have, well, it was not quite a stomp, but it was certainly a match where FFC had the advantage. But yeah, that was, wait, really? That w whoops. Oh yeah, wow, Darker Tide being a bit of a poor sport. All right.
Okay, yeah, that was... No, I can see, you know, being slightly rude to your opponent before saying GG is an expression of frustration, but yeah, that... Eh. Anyway... I don't disagree with the crow timing. I do think the crow was... One was enough. I don't think the factory being destroyed was a bad thing, but I do think after that, pivoting to getting... Getting to the center was necessary. Otherwise, those units just run roughshod, as they did. And yeah, as people pointed out, the game was likely to be FFC's game, just because FFC was expanding a bit faster. Darkest Tide was doing some clever stuff with Hidden Economy, but they weren't doing anything super efficient with their economy. They weren't expanding as quickly. They weren't building units as much. They weren't being as aggressive. So I, they started out aggressive with the Ducks, but they didn't really follow that up. Anyway, that's going to be that, so thanks for watching. Also, if people are wondering, okay, Steel Blue, that may be a problem in some maps. That's actually one of the things I don't really like about Adansonia in particular, is that that is a problem with Adansonia. It is really easy on this map to know what, who's going to win within the first couple minutes. Largely because the map is very large, open, but also set up in a way that it's kind of easy to defend. So there's this one little center front line that gets built up, and... There's not a whole lot of room to easily get around and be sneaky. Most of it being covered in water. I mean, early versions of Adansonia were worse because they didn't have this side bit. But even this one, it's still a map where if you win the, the Econ game early on, you've probably got the game. There's a lot of theoretical room for sneaky tactics going around the sides and such. It's just those tend not to pan out. Well, I mean, okay, I guess Darkest Eye could have managed to pull that off and make something happen, but... No, that probably wouldn't have happened. I mean, if it did, then the front line would have been su would have suffered, and that's just... I don't know, it's one of the things with this map, because I guess because the front line is so small compared to a lot of other maps. So, no, this map has a tendency to just not be all that tense, honestly. Anyway. So, yeah, that is going to be it. So, at some point, probably today, I'll be recording the answers to the question and answer video thing. But yeah, if you want to ask questions, the video, the question request video, the announcement video is still up on YouTube. I mean, it still will be. I'll just mention, like, okay, questions are over or something when I'm done. And yeah, deal with that. But yeah, thanks for watching, and have a good night, everyone.